There's reasons that you use a raised bed. One would be it helps get the soil up higher and you have better drainage. And that's often a problem with clay soils. They get really waterlogged and the plants are, are in essence drowning in, in the water in the root system. So you want to build that up higher so that you have better water drainage. The other thing with a raised bed is that you can also either completely replace the type of soil you have by bringing new soil in or you could improve your soil by adding different amendments to the soil. Obviously adding organic matter is one of the simplest and easiest methods of improving your soil. It does take time. It will improve over the years as you continue to add organic matter. But this is something that uh, any gardener can do on a regular basis. We have a, a wide variety of different types of organic matters that we could use. You could either use uh, compost, you could use uh, composted manures, you could add rotted straw, you can use grass clippings, all types of different uh, organic materials that you can add to your soil. If you're using manure on your garden for your organic matter, you do want to make sure that you use uh, fully composted manure. If you are going to apply fresh manure, you want to wait at least 120 days after you apply that manure before you harvest those crops because we want to avoid any potential soil contamination that could lead to a foodborne illness. You can also use organic matter to improve your sandy soils. Uh, sandy soils almost have the opposite uh, problem of clay soils in that the water leaches through very quickly. But by adding that organic matter, that increases the water holding capacity and likewise it in improves the texture and the tilth of that soil. So adding organic matter to sand is also a good idea. So you can build raised beds out of a variety of materials. You could use lumber or bricks or blocks, or sometimes you can even just make your own raised area by doing what we often call hilling or pulling in soil up high to make that kind of hilled raised area. So this is a very low cost option of doing raised bed planting without going to the expense of building a braised bed that you construct with boards or bricks or blocks. You want to make sure that you really incorporate the organic matter well into the soil. You want to dig it in deeply, make sure that the whole soil profile is uh, incorporated into that mix. And we want to do that before we do the planting. Uh, you may even want to incorporate the organic matter in the fall so that it has the winter to break down and mellow out that soil so that come spring you're really ready to garden. One other way that a, a gardener may have problems with a clay soil is just actually walking on it too much, uh, compacting that soil, working it too much. And uh, that's the other thing that if you're building a raised bed, you want to make sure that you build it narrow enough so that you can just reach in from either side and that you don't have to walk on that bed. So that if you do have a clay soil, try to stay off of that uh, soil bed as much as possible especially if the soil is damp and it's wet and you're compacting it, you're doing more harm than good. So the, the less compaction that you can uh, put on that soil, the better you'll be. In a situation like this where we're in a community garden, they may have the policy of the end of the year, they work this, till this ground all together. You know, they bring in equipment and till the whole thing. And if we all had raised beds in every single plot, it would be much more cumbersome to do those tillage operations and trying to keep the aisles clean, the paths clean, doing all the trimming and those types of things. So in some cases, uh, it's, it is a disadvantage to have a raised bed. Improving a clay soil does take some time and energy. It may take you a few years to really develop a good soil for your garden, but all that energy and time you've spent is going to pay off in healthier plants in your garden, which will lead to better production. For more information, visit your local Extension office or visit our website at kansasgreenyards.org.